Welcome inside episode 606 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, and we are very pleased today to introduce you to one of the newest members of the Senators Prospect Pool. Fourth round, 104th overall pick of the 2022 draft by the Ottawa Senators, it's Stephen Halliday, and he tells us about getting drafted by the Sens, going to dev camp, committing to the Ohio State University, and more. Yeah, who stood out to him at Sens dev camp? We get into all that and more. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Thursday, July 21st. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like the videos by clicking the thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment below. Let's welcome Stephen Halliday to the Senators organization today. So a little stick taps in the comments would be much appreciated. Pilsy, this was a really fun conversation. I get to know you with Stephen Halliday. Yeah, it's awesome getting to bring in the new drafted prospects because let's be honest, we didn't know much about Stephen Halliday before he was drafted by the Ottawa Senators. So we got a lot of new information on him as well. He, we chatted with him for half an hour. So we definitely got into a lot of topics and, uh, I think people will be very interested to see or hear how he talked about Sen's dev camp. You heard Tyler Boucher's story. Now you get to hear from Stephen Halliday. And we've got another one coming up on Monday, a soon to be two time guest and a favorite of many when we had him on last. So we're going to have three different angles of Sen's dev camp and stay tuned next week for that. Um, We will mention next week as well. We are going down to three episodes per, per week for the month of August. And Pilsy has a thank you to give out because it is vacation time. We'll do that right after the interview. But I'm fired up. I want to get right into it. There's so many questions. And when you take when you get these young kids on and new into the organization, especially, you don't know what to expect. We're like, oh, let's carve out 15, 18 minutes. And next thing you know, the clock's at 30 minutes. It was a fantastic interview with him Pilsy before we get to it though you've got a word from one of our favorite sponsors yep and Steven's got a long summer of training you'll hear he's trying to really work on his fitness and his strength and good way to do that is to get some protein in you and why not get some protein that also tastes good of course it's built bar the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar guys summer is here they've got a new s'mores built bar puffs and you may be thinking what are the built bar puffs well That's a protein bar with marshmallows in it. Ah, so it's probably not healthy. Wrong. They're protein-infused marshmallows. Yes, that is a real thing, and you got to try them out today. Built Bar focuses on making their bars taste good. Then they figure out how to make them healthy, and that's why I love Built Bar. All their bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Go to Built.com to get all your favorites. I mentioned s'mores. There's coconut, double chocolate, brownie batter. The flavors they have are all so delicious, so we recommend getting the mixed box. And to do that, go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your next order. One more time for the people in the back. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All right, here he is, the newest member of the Ottawa Senators prospect pool. It's Stephen Halliday. All right, we now welcome a very special guest, an Ajax Ontario native. He decided to take his talent south after minor hockey to hone his craft in the USHL. Now, he's the third highest point-producing player in league history and earned himself a ride at the Ohio State University, where he'll begin in the fall. But before his freshman season, he had an extra stop to make at Sens Development Camp after being selected 104th overall in last week's NHL draft. He's also coming off being named a first-team USHL All-Star and Gentleman of the Year. We'll see about that. Stephen Halliday, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Dude, it's our pleasure. We, uh, we've we been following you since the draft and, uh, and are really excited to have you a part of the organization. 
We always start with the same question, though. We're going to get into dev camp. We're going to get into what you're up to next year. But how'd you fall in love with the game of hockey? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, uh, when I was a kid, I just kind of went to the rink like a lot of kids. And then, um, yeah, I just kept playing all the way up. Um, and then I kind of played it for fun at start. And then probably when you're 14, 15, like, you realize that you really want to do this and that was kind of what happened, but I kind of just uh, really liked playing, had a lot of fun, and that's kind of a pretty cliche answer, but uh, yeah. Are you from a big hockey family, like brothers, sisters, uh, aunts, uncles, mom, dad, like anyone else in your family uh, really kind of introduced you to the game? Uh, my dad played when he was a kid, so he probably okay. he was probably the guy who introduced me to the game, and he, uh, my mom kind of drove me around a lot, so really big up to those two. Yeah, now are you a Toronto Maple Leafs household being an Ajax? Uh, my dad was a huge Leafs fan. He's oh. been a Leafs fan since he's a kid, so he's hoping that uh hoping they hoping they can get a cup when he's still uh around. Like he lifetime, he didn't so. throw his jer- he didn't throw his jersey away last week and, and exchange it for a little prettier one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I I uh, I think uh yeah, he's 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 really big Leafs fan, so I think uh I don't know what that the deal is there, but um, yeah, like uh, for sure, I think you'll probably uh, switch switch There's it. There's still time to change. There's still time. Yeah, There's hopefully. still time. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll work on them. How about you? Did you have a team growing up, or were you more focused on certain players? And if so, who were some of the guys who you tried to model your game after? Um, yeah, when I was a kid, I kind of rooted for the team against the Leafs just to like give my dad like like nice. uh, like yeah, give it give it to him. Sense fans are gonna uh, like hearing that one. Yeah, yeah, um, but. I kind of just watched the game. I just like watching it. And then as I got like into my middle teens, like I started watching my, my favorite player was Clayton Keller because I watched him at like a program game when I was, uh, we did like college stuff because I played in the U.S. So we went to like different colleges and we went to the U- USA Hockey Arena one time and I remember watching him play and I really liked his game. So I kind of followed him from when he played on that. And he's kind of been my favorite player, so. I like that because usually you hear the guys, especially at this age, Pilsy, where it's just like they want to model their game after someone who's like their size out there on the ice. I mean, you, you were probably Clayton Keller's height when you were playing in the GTHL <laughs> now uh, as a yeah, big fellow. I but... say, yeah, I wouldn't say like we play uh, super similar games. But no, but you admire I, how, I like how he plays. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a great player. So, yeah. So how'd the opportunity come up in the USHL? I mean, the GTHL, that's pretty much as close to uh, to National League as you can get playing minor hockey growing up. And then was it family circumstances? You said the family moved down to Maryland, or was it just an opportunity that opened up for you? Yeah, so um, I moved down with my dad because he got a new job here. So I played a couple of years in, um, like, it was like Team Maryland, and then I moved to, like, a uh, like a only birth year team that really only played tournaments. So we got a lot of practice, which probably helped my development a lot looking back on it. Um, and then I have family in Canada since I lived there. So I ended up moving in with my cousins in Toronto and uh, played for the Toronto Marlboros the last two years. So I kind of got to see like colleges because we'd play showcases there. And then um, when I came back to the OHL or OHL area, like, I got to see some of those rinks and we went to a couple of Steelheads games, stuff like that. So I kind of had the opportunity to see both, both paths. And I ultimately chose college just because bigger guy, like want to fill out more. Like um, I realized my path would be a little bit longer. So I chose college just because I still have a lot to, a lot to get better at. So that's kind of what, who, when I made the decision, that's kind of what I was looking at. Did you have any sort of thoughts about going the junior route or was it pretty clear cut decision you were going to go to college? Um, yeah, like the junior uh, route's pretty appealing, like especially as a kid, like um, you get to play in the OHL, like um, it's a pretty, pretty great league. But um, as like it was more so like it was pretty like I wouldn't say like even, but I ended up choosing college just because of like the p- type of player I was. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be like one of my friends, Drysdale, played in the league like two years and then he went to the NHL. So, like, guys like that, like, I would 100% go to the OHL, but I was a different player. So, I ended up choosing college just because I think I would have taken a longer time to get there. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at uh, at that GTHL team. You got Will Cully on, on the roster as well. So you got a couple first rounders that uh, you got to grow up playing with. And uh, not to point it out so abruptly, but you led the team in scoring and not by a small margin. Now, obviously, uh, if you follow the Sens at all the last couple of years, they've had an affinity for players who went to North Dakota and you had been committed to North Dakota. How did that situation play out? And then ultimately now heading to the University of Ohio State. Uh, yeah, like um, I committed there pretty young, like a lot of kids, um, you know, is appealing to commit young. So I did that. Um, I got pushed back a couple of years um, and I just felt like a, like a change of scenery would be better for me. Like nothing against like the coaches there or anything like that. I still think they are unbelievable people, great development. Like, Did you go to the Ralph at all? Pardon? Did you take a visit to the Ralph? Yeah, I did. So That place is the, wild, yeah. hey? Yeah, they have probably the best facility in the college hockey, and then they probably outdo some NHL teams. Like, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But <clears throat> that being said, like, I thought it would just be a better like for school and stuff too. Like, I, I wanted to, you know, get a better education. Not saying North Dakota doesn't have a good education. It's just I felt like Ohio State was like a better fit for me, and um, I didn't end up committing them right away or anything like that. Like, it was, but um, I just felt like at the time like to just kind of take a reset and um it ended up committing to ohio state this summer or this past summer almost coming into the year so um they were one of the first teams that reached out um you know I, I, that was big for me not not a team that came in like later like when i was having a pretty solid year so um definitely love the coaching staff there um they're going to get me better not only as a player but a person too um, they obviously have a pretty, really good facility playing the big 10. They're going to play great teams. Like a couple of my buddies on my debut team, um, playing in the big 10. So definitely going to be a fun year. So I'm excited. So Johnny Goodrow is not the only one who's changing to go to Columbus. Yeah. Hey, eh? we've got another guy heading yeah, to Ohio uh, as well. Hey, those, uh, Buckeye football games, a nice little yeah. bonus too. yeah. Uh, play the Friday, Saturday, head over with the boys, go see, uh, some great college football on the Sunday. No, I think it'll be a great spot for you uh, as well. And I know you got another sense prospect who's going to join you there, not this upcoming season, but afterwards in uh, Theo Wahlberg. I thought that was kind of a cool connection as well. Now um, with the NHL draft, that was kind of the next thing uh, for you. And I thought it was awesome to see you were at the, the, the draft, weren't you? I was not. No. Oh, what? I mixed that up. That's my bad. I must've gotten you mixed up with, uh, with Jorian, but I saw you had the jersey on pretty soon after. And where were you? How did you f- find out that you were selected fourth round by the Ottawa Senators? Yeah, I was at home, um, you know, being passed over a couple of times in the draft. Like, obviously, like, that's a really special thing. I'm super excited and honored to be picked by the Sens. But that being said, like, uh, sitting over two drafts, like, it's kind of – it's pretty hard to do. And I feel like a lot of kids – uh, deserve to get picked this year that maybe didn't and um, maybe they can look at a guy like me who got passed over two years and had a good third year so um, definitely think that um, yeah like being there with my family is definitely a special feeling something I won't forget but at the end of the day like um, you got to go into Ohio State or wherever you go and just uh, put on the work boots again and try to get a try to get better try to get better so that's kind of where my head's at but yeah, I'm definitely super excited to be a senator, and I'm really excited that the team believes in me. So, Well, that's awesome, man. And uh, you're not the first guy who's been passed over twice who's made it and, and has been on our show. And we had Igor Sokolov on. He's a good buddy of ours on the show, and he took the same development path, and now he's, he's a leading scorer in the AHL. So it's just a matter of getting that much better. Another big kid too, right? And you said you guys who have those growth yep. spurts a little bit younger – take a little bit longer to get into your body. So I think it's an awesome feather in your cap. You get the rivalry with your dad back there too. And I think that's great. Did you know anybody in the Sens organization uh, before the draft? Uh, like players or? Players, staff, Anyone. anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, I knew Oh, they were invites to camp, but um like I knew Sanderson and Clevin a little bit playing against those guys in the USHL. Um, both really good players. Didn't really like going down Clevin's side very much. Just, <laughs> oh, we we, we call him the, the K train. He he got you good. Yeah. 
Uh, no, I I don't know. I kind of I kind of I knew about him all, so he's always in the corner of my eye. But yeah, I've I've seen it firsthand. Smart. Yeah, he's, yeah. I don't want to go down to that guy's side with your head down, but um, yeah. And then Sanderson play played against him. He's a great player. Um, yeah. So those two guys, I wouldn't say I'm like good buddies with, but I know I know them. So. Now, did you have any idea the Senators were interested in you, or did you have any um, like inklings that teams were were gonna pick you finally this year, or what was your kind of feeling going into this draft? Yeah, obviously, um, you never like you never know for certain, but um, I had talked to the Senators. Um, um, I really liked like what they're trying to do with their um, development and stuff. Um, Talked to a couple others, but I didn't really put too much weight on that stuff just because, you know, worst comes to worst, you go to Ohio State and you just get better every year and you'll eventually have, have the opportunity. So, yeah, um, your path wasn't yeah, going to change whether you got drafted or not, eh? Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's a big thing for like a lot of kids. Like, I feel like they, um, maybe they don't get picked and they feel like, uh, you know, their pass over, but I feel like it doesn't really matter if you get picked or not, but obviously I'm really excited I got picked. I don't want to take away from that, but um, yeah, like uh, I did talk to the Ottawa Senators, so yeah, I definitely like had them in the back of my mind, like when they were on the clock, maybe pay attention more, but um, yep. at the end of the day, like I'm pretty excited to uh, get picked by them. So then the next, uh, it's a busy whirlwind week, isn't it? Like you get drafted, the excitement's still there. And then it's like, hey, get your gear. You got to come up here and show yeah. us what you got right away. Uh, what was your first impressions coming up to Ottawa and uh, heading on to the ice for the first time wearing the uh, Sens practice jersey? Yeah, no, it was definitely cool. Um, me being in Maryland, um, there's another kid, Cam O'Neill. I've skated with him a couple of times. So we kind of, we got on the same flight. So it wasn't like uh, super, but super uh like nerve-wracking just because you kind of have a guy to go in with but um i would say that is a long haul just because uh like the connections and then the border it's getting a little hectic down there so it was a long day but i was super excited to finally get there i roomed with um jorian so me and nice. him got to know each other pretty well so he's a good guy and um yeah, like he was definitely excited. A lot of most of us were pretty nerve wracking the first practice. You could uh, get a little jittery, and then the stiff gear too. You know, uh, a couple passes were off. I think the first <laughs> drill, I like missed my pass. I went like in the other way, and I was like, "Well, whatever." Um, well, you're not a disher, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I I pride myself on the passes part, but um, yeah, like uh, yeah, it was definitely a special feeling, and I hope that I can do it uh, in the future. That's awesome. What was the biggest uh, difference? And I, I guess at this stage, it's still guys who are who are your age, your experience level. But was there just a, a little extra notch up there knowing that you've got an NHL general manager and a complete development staff running the show? Yeah, it was definitely like everyone gave like 110 percent if they were given 100 percent before. But um, yeah, like a thing for me is like uh, I wanted to go in, um, show them that, you know, they not they preach like playing your game not doing too much so i kind of we didn't really get too much of the games and a lot of it was a three on three but um i felt like i did uh i did the best that i could possibly do i thought i did a great showing um and then yeah like uh even that being said i think that um guys like i was really watching uh novak and uh low heat because those guys are older guys in the college hockey so tried to match up a little bit more against them to, you know, feel out the strength and stuff like that, you know, because you don't get to do that a lot in Maryland just because the talent pool isn't as deep. But, yeah, definitely those two guys I really wanted to go against, you know, because they battle pretty hard. So kind of, like, see where I'm at there, and I thought I did pretty well. So definitely calmed a little bit of the nerves going into the season. That's awesome. Did you have any good conversations with whether it was Jesse Winchester or Sean Donovan or Wade Redden about what they're hoping to see from you throughout this upcoming season? Uh yeah, like not so not not so much about like what they have, like what they want to see. It's more so like they just want to see me use them. They're great resources. All of them are unbelievable player development. Um I think Wade just got hired, so um yeah. definitely I've already used um Sean a couple a couple of times, you know, center. I'm trying to learn on better draws and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely pay attention to Drew this year when he's on the sends because I, I think he's a pretty good draw guy, even though he's a righty. But, 
like uh, that's something I really want to be better at. And then obviously like just being a center, like trying to um, dominate the middle of the ice, playing with pace, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm really excited to use those guys. Like they're there to make you better. So I'll definitely be calling them up a lot and asking. And then obviously like they got the skating coach too. That's something. Yeah, Shelly Kettles. On, so. That was yeah. a great video. Eh? She's, she wants to make you guys look so bad out there. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's good though because uh, that's something that I need to work on personally. So I'm definitely excited to maybe like send her for clips and stuff like that. Um, so uh, that too, and then obviously like they're gonna come watch me play. So definitely super excited, and hopefully I can get over to a Columbus Blue Jackets game when they're in town. So nice. that's uh, that's another plus. Yeah, that's interesting for me. Like, what's your relationship like with the development staff uh, now that you've been drafted, now that you've met them, now that you've done a dev camp? Are are you kind of chatting with them on a regular basis? Are they sending you drills to do? Are you sending them videos back of uh, what you're doing? And they're kind of critiquing you and helping you? Or what's that relationship like at this point? Uh, yeah, like at first it's a little bit shy, but you kind of got to realize that they're there to help you. Um, they're not trying to be intimidating. Yeah. So I'd say um, I, t I don't talk to them regularly, but I'm more so in contact with uh, the strength coach Jeremy. Okay. Um, that's something that I need. To, uh, I'm I'm just being a being a bigger guy, trying to put on more like muscle up top and stuff like that. So that's a big big guy. I'm gonna be talking to a lot of over the course of the year. You know, maybe sending them like weights and stuff that I've been doing. Um, maybe getting like a body composition test, sending them sending it over to them. Like been a really great resource. Uh, so yeah, so that's a big guy um, that I'm really looking forward to working with. Um, so not only the development staff, but like a lot of different people that they have is just, it's mind blowing. Just I, I, I have good people at Ohio State too, like nutritionists and stuff they have there. But nice. um, just having that extra like help that are, that maybe like other guys at Ohio State wouldn't have, but I have because of Ottawa. So I'm definitely super excited for that. That's awesome. Dev Camp's one of my favorite times of year. I was I was rattled I couldn't make it out this year uh, to come see you guys. It's uh, obviously um, the first look at that recent crop of prospects, but you got pretty much every prospect in the system is out there trying to make the best name for themselves and put their best foot forward. Who was the guy who stood out to you on the ice? I know you're watching Novak and uh, and Lohite, what they were doing, but was there a guy or two who you noticed and you're like, wow, that guy is probably pretty close to the NHL? Yeah, obviously Rids. He's pretty good, obviously. Um, but but a uh, guy that maybe you guys don't know too much about, you probably do because you guys are pretty in tune. But Kyle McDonald, one of my good buddies, uh, oh, thought okay. he did a really good job. He I, was I from uh, see, North Bay, right? Yeah, I could definitely see him. You know, um, getting a contract after this year for sure. So um, that's a guy that if I think he's gonna go to uh, the tournament or something. I don't. Uh, is there like a prospect tournament? I think there's. Like I don't know. I, I think there might be a new there. one. I feel. I feel like Elite Prospects just started uh, something. That's oh, interesting. Wow. No, it's like yeah. uh, it's the it's like the rookie tournament. Oh Vince yes, Jones yes, rookie. Ki they're think... doing. Uh, I think it's in Buffalo this year. It's like Ottawa, okay. Montreal. Because you can't go to that, right? You're already going to be at Ohio no, State. Yeah. yeah um, so okay. I won't be there, unfortunately. But I think that guy will make up. He's a really good player, so I definitely think yeah, if you guys are watching, like a guy that maybe you wouldn't think like on the on to watch at the beginning, but I think that's a guy that you'll definitely want to watch. Nice, that's a that's a good little scoop there, and I want I want to go to your your previous uh, season with uh, the Fighting Saints in the USHL because looking at your point totals. You went from 34 points uh, in Illinois to 38 to 48, and then you exploded this year with 95, basically doubling your point total. What uh, what really helped you have that amount of success last season to, to, to double up in points, essentially? Yeah, um, I, obviously, like, I thought I got better every year, but the second year COVID was a little bit different. Um, I put on a couple pounds. I think I was like 244, so definitely we all uh, did, man. not ideal. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> um, yeah, that summer, last summer, I uh, lost about 35 pounds. Wow. Like 35? Yeah, so I'm wow. weighing around like 210. So um, definitely uh, that was a big factor in just skating faster, being able to play longer shifts. I um, thought I always had the skill. I just – Maybe didn't have the other stuff, so I did boxing. Um, played a lot of tennis. I'm a nice. huge tennis fan, so 
um, that's something I did. Um, I went, I skated a lot and, you know, I, I uh, don't eat bread anymore. So that's like a big thing. Like it cuts Ooh. out like pizza sandwiches, stuff like that. Um, definitely Number still eat combo, carbs, Andy's. obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. It cuts me. out burgers, too, like stuff like that. Um, but you got to uh, do the yeah, lettuce wrap still, burger still, I, yeah. man. Yeah. You yeah, big lettuce like, wraps guy now? Uh, no, I'm, I, I mean, I've had them before, but, uh, yeah, like I would definitely, if I, if that was like, the place we went for like a tea like last year i had to make my own lunches because like we'd have pizza on the buses and stuff like that or not lunches dinners but right um if we had sandwiches like i'd pretty much eat the insides and not the outside but um yeah like definitely that stuff helped me a lot and losing the weight and then obviously like uh just kind of like turn my whole mindset into like a pro almost just because right. You know, if you really want to make it, like, everyone's pretty skilled. Everyone can do a lot of the things, but it's some of the other things that separate. So that's something that I focused on, like, just eating right throughout the whole year. Um, you know, doing extra stuff in the gym, like, mobility and stuff since I'm a bigger guy. Um, and then, obviously, like, I credit a lot to, like, my coach this year, Greg Brown. Um, he's coaching at BC this year, so maybe we'll play them in the tournament or something. That would be sick. But um, he definitely, like, taught me a lot about – being a pro he's coached a lot of guys Chris Kreider Johnny Goudreau obviously so um and he was one of the like development guys in those teams so he definitely worked with them pretty really closely um he'd take me out and shoot with me um teach me like a lot of different like things that like maybe I didn't know and things I can add to my game and I ended up doubling or tripling I think it was close to tripling my goal total from um the previous season so definitely a lot of credit goes to him I mean, you're the all-time leader in Dubuque fighting Saints history in in points, and I think you're like third or fourth in in goals. Like when you get in the zone, like you did this year, like how much fun is it playing hockey? I can I gotta imagine that you're going out there like ah, good for two, maybe three tonight. Like, it, is there just a feeling where you feel like I, I'm just gonna dominate out there? Ah, uh, I wouldn't say like like that's like the mindset, but. Um, I definitely credit like a lot to my teammate, um, Kurth and Beck. Um, they yep. they both we kind of meshed as a line. Um, definitely wouldn't have 95 points without those guys. So uh, definitely helped me this year. But I definitely felt like I can carry the puck, and I think gave me a lot of confidence to just kind of play my game and know that I can do stuff. And I think that's a big thing is maybe kids lose the confidence when they go to make the jump to junior because you know they're not a little they're not ready or they just need a little bit extra time. So I think that that was a learning curve and I think that uh that was a good lesson. Okay. Can we we got to uh, talk about the playoffs because I feel like it's the same as Belleville. You guys played two games. It was a best of three. Like Yeah. How are you supposed to have a, a good back and forth series when you play two games? Yeah, it's tough. The first game's away too, so you you know you kind of. Like, you were yeah. the higher seed. Yeah. yeah. Oh come on! Same That's as Belleville. Yeah. Belleville comes okay. home for their first playoff game and they're facing elimination. Yeah, <laughs> lost in overtime. Of, it's brutal. Yeah, uh, yeah. We played Mesquite and like they kind of had our number all year, but we thought we were the better team. Like um, going into the like, and we felt that if Chicago um, landed up losing, I felt like we could have won the. Clark Cup I think wow. it would have been us in Chicago kind of battling in that final thing they, I think they they were pretty good beating us too but I definitely think we could have beat Madison in Sioux City it's just a matter of like matchup style and like, I think we let in like, it was like eight like, in the final oh, game yeah so then it was like 12 goals in two games so you're not really gonna win too much <laughs> there but um yeah. the first was the second game was really weird we were down like 5-1 and we came back and tied it up so yeah it was tough i mean but... you had your guy with five points in two games <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> you always like to get the stats going but at the end of the day like playoffs like i wouldn't have cared if i had like zero points in 20 games right. and we were i was like i just really like especially my last year really wanted to win yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, the Big Ten is going to be a great spot for you, I think, at Ohio State. And uh, I know you're not looking too far ahead, but Sens fans are when it comes to what you can bring down the middle and um, and getting stronger. And yeah, you lean on those guys for faceoffs, man. And you got the you got the offensive instincts. Clearly, you wouldn't be able to put up the amount of points you have been able to uh, without that. And I love the perseverance, that aspect of your story, where it's like, you know what, passed over once 
passed over twice. Did you go to any rookie uh, camps after uh, each of the last couple seasons? Uh, no, just because uh, there was a lot of like COVID related stuff. Right, so. yeah. right. Yeah. Well, man, that just even makes it more impressive. Just battling through. Uh, you said you're a big tennis guy. Is is that your favorite sport to play, or or are you a big follower of the ATP and WTA? Uh both. So, yeah. No, so, like, so who's the know? tennis? Who's the tennis goat? The dollar Federer. Um, I don't know. The, it's like the big three. So I'd probably like I'd probably Joe say Rich by the end of too? his career. Okay. Probably say by the end of this career, probably Djokovic will be the best one. Yeah, man, yeah. The, it, it's cool. Like that, living through this this golden age of tennis, it feels like every year since what, like two thousand, the turn of the century. There's the like, the three, four guys who are just so much better. As far as I can remember, else. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Sure. Um, are you baseball, football, basketball guy? How would you power rank those? Um. I, don't, I like watching football. Um, not a huge baseball guy, but I'll play golf occasionally. I mean, being in Maryland, I don't blame you. The Orioles stink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not too great. Uh, no, no, that's but, all good. Pills, you got anything else for for Steven? I think this has been awesome getting getting to kind of peel back the layers of uh, what Sens fans can expect down the road. Yeah, final question for me, Stephen. Thanks for giving us uh, some of your time here. What are you kind of expecting the biggest uh, kind of challenge to transitioning from the USHL to the college game is going to be? Yeah, I mean, definitely probably getting the new system. You know, I played on three uh, team or I played on the same team for the last three years. Fair. Um, yeah. Felt like, felt like, I mean, I haven't played a game yet, so I can't really like for certainty but i feel like my pace of play will be pretty similar i think as of right now um can't really say that for certainty though um definitely looking to get into the training camp and really like prove that um that uh, that i can play on the team you know nothing's really given that's why i like about these guys is that like if i don't show up i'm, I'm not gonna play so um definitely like they treat it like a pro team i think we have a really good team too like we have um Probably say a top two goalie in the NCAA. Nice. I think it'd be Levi. would be number one. I think Dobis would be number two for sure. Um, okay. He's, um, I mean, Portillo. I play with Portillo too, so Portillo would be in the mix too. He's a good guy. So um, don't want to see him win too much, though. He's on Michigan. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I'd probably say he's definitely right up there. Um, so, I mean, if you have a good goal, you can win pretty much any night. So, yeah. especially, like, in college hockey, it's almost like a game seven every every game. So, I definitely think that uh, those, I think probably the pace of play will be the difference maker. But, like, I took a lot of courses uh, at the Buke. So, I want to have a big load. It's kind of like, uh, I think I'm going to take, like, close to the minimum classes that you need to play hockey at Ohio State. So, um, you can have more time to spend in the gym, more time to work on video with coaches, uh, more time to like adjust just to do extra stuff there. Um, they have us all living off camp or not off campus, but at like an apartment. So we don't really have to deal with the dorms and stuff, which is nice. So yeah, is nice. that's another plus. So I think that it's kind of like set up for success. So I just got to kind of, you know, um, embrace it all and just try to do my best. So, well, the season starts October 1st against Mercyhurst. What's your, you mentioned where you're going to be living. When are you heading down to Columbus and when are you going to kind of settle into to everything that has, has going on le- leading up to school year? Um, probably mid August, I think. So plenty of time, you know, get practice and stuff. And then, so that's pretty exciting. And then we should have, uh, a pretty long training camp, which will get everyone ready. So, Excited to do that, and then we got a new coach, assistant coach uh, Luke Strand, head coach of Sioux City. So, looking forward to um, working with him as well as JB Bittner and Coach Rolick. Um, so, definitely pretty excited, but I think I'm going to head down mid August. That's awesome. So, you're going to keep skating in Maryland then for the rest uh, of the summer? Yeah, like that's the plan. Um, you know, just kind of doing like the stuff that I've always done that I've done better or doing. So, I think that um, just kind of doing like the conditioning at end of practice and stuff. Maybe I think I did pretty good in the conditioning. Like when we did it in Ottawa, we did a couple of herbies. Um, but I don't think it's uh, gonna be that easy in Ohio State. But um, definitely think that um, that 
I can add that into hand, and then I do like boxing, work with track coaches and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna keep doing that for almost a month. I think I'm gonna go to the City Open. It's a tennis tournament in the first week of August. I think Murray's playing in it, so it's in Washington oh, DC. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, hey, Sense fans are excited not only to get to know you a little bit, but follow you at the Ohio State University. We're going to be right along with everybody. And, hey, we'll uh, touch base after maybe a month or two of the season and see how everything's settling into the college ranks. But, Stephen, can't thank you enough for joining us, and uh, we appreciate it, man. So all the best throughout the summer, and we'll talk when you get to school. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Stick taps to Stephen for joining us. What a great conversation. Great kid. Love the part where he says, no. I'm not a Leaf fan like my dad, but I did cheer against Toronto every chance I got. That's a guy who's going to really make himself endeared to Sens fans in a hurry. Yeah, and I mean, that's the Sens culture. So he's already buying into the uh, the culture here. So you love to hear that. And a cool thing that I learned as well from that is that even though he's from Ajax, he and his family had already moved to Maryland before he played in the GTHL. Yeah. He moved back in with his cousins to be able to play, it just shows you the dedication that these people have. And I think I, I told him as well, but the dedication not only there to uproot his whole childhood to go and, and really focus on hockey, but then being passed over not one but two NHL drafts. So this is a story of perseverance. And to quote Mitch Brown from EP, he will immediately be one of the most fun players to watch in college hockey. So giddy up. Get ready for next season at the Ohio State. So that will be really fun. A uh, great conversation with him. Pilsy, before we go, he, East Coast guy, Maryland, you're just going a little bit further up the coast to uh, Halifax and PEI. We got a lot of listeners out in Nova Scotia. Yeah, I'm fired up. Uh, my girlfriend and I have been planning, all right, what are we going to do when we're out there? And I was like, well, why not toss it out to Twitter, maybe get a couple replies of some good spots to uh, to go and the East Coast people, salt of the earth people, as we know and we always mention. I got 60 replies of places to go check out in Halifax and in PEI. So safe to say I've got a uh, decent list of spots I'm going to hit up. And this is my first time out, out East. So hopefully I get to uh, experience the East Coast lifestyle. And uh, I am so fired up to eat a lot of seafood. So this is going to be a great vacation. And thanks to all the East Coast people on Twitter that hit me up with recommendations. Yeah, man, you're making me jealous, nostalgic, I should say, as I lived in Halifax for two years. And uh, I'll make sure that you're in the right spot. And you got a DM too. Someone else is going to show you around. So that will be yeah. pretty fun. What a beauty, eh, Igor? We got to get Igor back on the show. Yeah, Igor heard I was coming to Halifax. And uh, he's like, yeah, we, we got to meet up for sure. I was like, oh, let's grab some beers. He's like, ah, I'm off the beers, but we can meet up for a coffee. <laughs> so Igor's focusing on his fitness. You'll love to see that. And uh, he's out in Halifax. So I'll definitely try to catch up with Igor. And we got to get him back on the show. Like, it, it's just always a pleasure to chat with Igor Sokolov. Yeah, 100%. Great Sens army coming together. There's a big a big bubble of Sens fans out in Halifax, but the one public, since you mentioned that uh, that you're looking for a pint or two, the Ale House is, is the way to go. Was that in, in, in a few recommendations? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the Ale House, Lower Deck, Bicycle Thief, and uh, for PEI, everyone said, uh, I believe it's the Blue Muscle Cafe, and that's right in the area that I'm going to be in. I love muscle. I mean, so, uh, how big's PEI? Wouldn't most everything be in the area? Yeah, fair. But I'm going specifically to the North Rustico area, and that's okay. where it is. So I'm fired up about that. Uh, I've been off seafood for the last two weeks. I'm like, I'm not going to. Why would I eat seafood in Ontario when I'm just about to head out east and enjoy some of the best? So I'm saving my appetite for there, and uh, I'm pretty fired up. That's awesome. Hey, any other recommendations? Put it for us in the comments. And since you're going to take a stab, I don't think there's as many Sens fans, but uh, I'm turning 30 in a couple weeks and I'll be in San Francisco for that. Never been. Got a nice little deal on the flight. So away we go with the girlfriend. So if uh, I got three days in San Francisco and I need to make the most of them. So, hey, we are now a sports and travel podcast. So please <laughs> yeah, please exactly. give, us, uh, give us some recommendations. And uh, this is just this is us going down to three shows a week. We're still going to have some great interviews coming up. And I had a big time tease on yesterday's show that I don't regret, Pilsy. I don't regret it. I have a feeling that things are going to be looking up for the show coming in to September as well. But yeah, I would say right when training camp, mm, 
rookie camp begins and they've got that uh that rookie tournament that steven was mentioning he can't take part of course being a college kid but once that rookie tournament starts i think we'll be back at five shows a week and the postcast will return better than ever this upcoming season so lots of excitement ahead but coming up tomorrow we've got some immediate excitement and the math to chuck saga i said we touch on it one of the next two days we're gonna go into the weekend feeling good that our kachuk is locked up for six more years and uh, what's going on in Calgary. We'll take a look around the league because you told me that Zach Sanford signed and I completely missed it. So maybe we'll do a a look at the sends abroad because it feels like every other day there was a Senators player or former going to Toronto or Florida. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to go to too many teams to be able to figure it out. So we'll, we'll get into all that tomorrow. Pilsy, any final thoughts today before we go? No, that was uh, it. Was great to chat with uh, Stephen Halliday, and we're gonna slowly start checking off the 2022 uh, draft picks from the Ottawa Centers, and we've already got another one in in the works here. So I'm excited to get to know these guys and to get to introduce them to you, the U Sense fans. Yes, that's not Monday's guest though, so you'll have to keep guessing <laughs> on that. We'll be back tomorrow for Brandon Pillar. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day. <laughs>